Although this game is in a pre-season schedule, there's nothing friendly about Bradford and Leeds meeting against a backdrop of fierce passion, fierce pride for the respective colours of the two sides. Otsal Stadium this afternoon, once again a cauldron of noise, a kaleidoscope of colour for this one. Let's have some Sunday afternoon fun. Bradford with first use of the ball and they're moving it 20 out from their own try line as Suter goes to Blackmore. Blackmore fronts up, he's brought down 25 shy of halfway on tackle number two. Ball goes back out of dummy half now to Smith, Smith to Lawrence. Lawrence carries it forward, he's 20 shy of halfway, tackle free gone here for him and O'Carroll's side, Suter to Gaskell, Gaskell an early kick which will turn around Riley Lum, Riley Lum goes towards the corner, takes it five metres out from touch, five metres out from his own try line and the Leeds Rhinos fullback is upended there in a good kick chase tackle led by Jordan Lilly and Daniel Smith who were charging up down the middle of the park. In there at dummy half is Jack Sinfield. No introduction about his father's qualities. As Leeds now moving the ball down the middle channel, just trying to get a little bit ahead of steam early doors here. As Bradford, as we say, they've got a very strong side out there on the field. Certainly for this first half, it's probably the strongest side and get the biggest indication of what Eamon O'Carroll is likely to have at his disposable next week in that Dewsbury game in the 1895 Cup. Leeds now, 10 shy of half ways, former Bradford man. James Donaldson's caught high above the chest. And that's John Davis, I do believe, who's been penalised for that high tackle. So there is six former Bradford players in this Leeds team this afternoon. Lewis Roberts, who was on loan last season. Corey Johnson, who's been on loan in the previous two seasons. Mikhail Ialetsky, who had a loan spell in 2017. Jared O'Connor, of course, has had two years, two loan spells. James Donaldson, of course, who was here for five seasons. And Leon Ruin, who also joined Lewis Roberts on loan last season. So Leeds now on the attack, 10 out from the Bradford Bulls try line. We've had two minutes gone on the clock as the ball goes out of dummy half to Sinfield. Sinfield towards Donaldson, former Bradford man wrapped up, five metres out, left hand side of the post, West Yorkshire Radio, Bulls TV. Leeds giving a six again because Hallis was dislaying on at the play of the ball. I do believe the call from referee Aaron Moore who comes from Wigan. He officiated this game two years ago here at Odsall when Leeds in the second half ran riot by 30 points to 12. Ball now goes towards Donaldson to Johnson. Corey Johnson goes straight towards Lilly and Davis. Mitch Suter comes in, turns around Johnson, puts him on his back. In there at dummy half is Jared O'Connor. O'Connor now misses out a Ledsky. Ball goes across the face of the post. Once again, Donaldson at loose forward. Going through a lot of work early doors here. They're eight metres out, left hand side of the post. Ball goes probing towards Sinfield. Sinfield to Lum. Lum dumped on his back. Good, fierce, passionate Bradford Bulls defence early doors here. Five outs, two in front of the post, and Sinfield cuts through. Last grass tackle there from the Bulls, and it was Daniel Smith again. They're on the last tackle now. Johnson kicks through. Good positioning from Aidan McGowan. McGowan puts his body on the line and takes an absolutely crunching tackle there from Mikolai Oletsky. And now Leeds will concede the penalty because someone's gone in with the shoulder. On Lee Gaskell, Gaskell's pointing to his head there, but it will be the penalty for going in on the shoulder, so an early penalty apiece. And Lee Gaskell just using that experience there to calm things down here at Otsal Stadium. So if you're just joining us, we'll quickly go through the Bradford Bulls lineup once again. 14 changes made by Eamon O'Carroll. McGowan fullback, wing three quarter line. Blackmore, Myers, Giltafua, halves of Gaskell, Lilly. Forwards, Lawrence Suter, Smith, Davis, Butler, and Hallis at loose forward. And on the bench, Jowett, Skur, Doro, Apo, Flanagan, Arundel, Piposhe, Okoro, and Oaks. Here goes Gaskell now, taking that Leeds line on. The 25 out on tackle number two. They're over on the far stand side. Suter now to McGowan. McGowan to Lawrence. Lawrence fronts up. He's 20 metres out in front of the Leeds post here. No score. Four minutes gone on the clock. As Daniel Smith now moves the ball along the line towards Hallis. Hallis is wrapped up there by Littlewood and Aledsky. Bradford on tackle four. One remaining on this set as Suter now goes back to Smith. Smith to Gaskell. Gaskell towards the corner. Good defence though from 
the Leeds Rhinos wrapping young Jaden Myers up. They're on the last tackle though, the Bulls. Crossfield kick from Gaskell. It's a lottery for Bradford. They've got the five numbers and the bonus ball. And they're going to take home the prize, the jackpot. It's Mitch Souter underneath the post. Pinpoint accuracy from Lee Gaskell. And I bet Mitch Souter is happy he put the £2 lottery ticket on because it's a last tackle power play. Leads all at sleep underneath the post. And Mitch Souter, he gets his first try in the red, amber and black. And take about Lee Gaskell, the composure there, the experience. We said there was a number of Leeds players who were all trying to go for the ball, but in the end, young Riley Lomi was a little bit exposed alongside Ben Hersey Horde, and it was Mitch Shooter who's plucked the ball out of the clouds and he's put it down underneath the post. An early try here to the Bradford Bulls. We've had five minutes gone on the clock. Lily from in front. This could be two points for Jordan Lily, which it is. Bradford Bulls six. Leeds Rhinos nil, five minutes gone on the clock here at Odsall Stadium. West Yorkshire Radio also going out on Bulls TV for those that are joining us this afternoon on the stream. Hopefully, Calf, you're enjoying the coverage and uh, you're feeling better. So, Suter with the try, the young Australian who's come in the close season from the Canberra Raiders. Lily, three from five ahead of that kick. He goes to four from six. One from one this afternoon. And a bit of a costly penalty there by the Leeds Rhinos, giving Bradford cheap field position. I'm not quite sure who the Leeds player was who went in with a shoulder, but that won't please Rowan Smith because that penalty, rather than Bradford being stuck at the South Bank end of the stadium, as we know from the games against Halifax and Hull FC, it is very, very difficult if you are playing and defending in that particular area of the field. But so far, so good for Eamon O'Carroll and the Bradford Bulls. John Davis playing the ball, tackle three on the restart. Suiting out to Lawrence. Lawrence wrapped up by, by Aledsky and also Littlewood involved in that tackle. Suiting now to Daniel Smith. Smith now to Gaskell. Gaskell on that right hand edge towards Chester Butler. He's rolled over on halfway. Bradford on the fifth and last tackle. They're literally on the last on halfway. They go short side to Gaskell. Gaskell chips one, or should I say dips one over the top towards Riley Lum, who does well. Takes that one on the knees, five out from the line. There's a lot of uh, heroism there from young Riley Lum because he's got Sam Hallis, John Davis and Michael Lawrence hunting, trying to uh, stop the Leeds Rhinos young fullback from making any uh, any position forward with ball in hand. Well, the message from Rowan Smith going into this game was he's looking for another strong statement from his side after watching his side produce a strong second half performance against Wakefield on Boxing Day. Rowan, of course, arrived at Odsall in April 2016, replacing Jimmy Lowe's as head coach. Rowan would then coach the Bulls for only 20 games, but he did leave a little bit of a legacy at Odsall, winning 14 from 20. He had a very respectable 70% coaching record in charge of the Bulls, brought Kieran Mostey and Chisholm over from Australia as Bradford deal with the high hanging aerial threat there from Jack Sinfield. It's Aidan McGowan who's taken that one from the clouds. So Bradford back in possession here, leading by six points to nil. If you're just joining us, it is Bradford six leads nil here at Odsall Stadium. Suiting out to Tafua, the jukebox. Spoke to Kieran Gill at Tong earlier on this week. Kieran Gill actually said when he was growing up he wanted to emulate the jukebox and now he's got him as his centre wing partner. Funny how the world of rugby league uh, comes around. As Gill's in possession, now tackle free, playing the ball. Suter to Daniel Smith, and Smith fronts up, takes four Leeds defenders out of that play, the defensive line. And two of those are Aledsky and Donaldson. The other two retreat. Bradford are going to put a kick in early here from Lilly. Lilly under pressure from Donaldson. Ball comes downtown here, and that's good kick chase pressure. Lilly boots a ball. Tafua comes in and wraps up Daryl Olfert. But referee Aaron Moore is going to penalise George Tafua. He's going to say Tafua was a little bit aggressive in the tackle. He's been pinged for holding down. And it is a penalty now, remember. Previous seasons, it had just been a six again. And the coaches complained that clubs and sides were taking liberties with that ruling. 
but it is Leeds back in possession here now. They've gone a little bit further up the field. As we see Luke Littlewood giving the ball there to Tom Nicholson Watton. And Watton's lost the ball in the tackle. So Bradford back in possession here, deep inside the Leeds half of the field. So two early errors from the Rhinos. That won't please Rowan Smith. Uh, early doors in this game now. As Bradford come down the middle channel here with Dan Smith to Michael Lawrence. And they're going to be brought down just underneath the post here as Dan Smith gets to his feet and he'll play the ball. Here goes Lawrence, he gets it, flick on pass towards Hallis. Hallis wrapped up there by Nicholas Walton and also Oledski. Ball's been stolen there by Nicholas Walton. Penalty in front of the post. Some of the supporters are saying let's go for two. It is pre-season, it is the Leeds Rhinos, but I think Bradford are just going to tap the ball and run here, looking to turn six into potentially ten or even... 12 points on the scoreboard so they're declining the two points from in front Lawrence tackle one Suter misses out Smith finds Gaskell Gaskell Hallas Hallas is brought down scored a famous try Sam Hallas in that challenge cup win here at Odsall in 2019 Bradford are under the post with Michael Lawrence held up two metres out three tackles gone two remaining here for the Bradford Bulls at Odsall Stadium as Suter goes behind everybody Leeds are going to try and pick possession up here but Tafua has had to scramble back and Bradford have lost 25 metres there from that loose pass out of dummy half so this is tackle number four one remaining here for the Bulls as Lilly to McGowan didn't really know much to do about that ball did Aidan McGowan we'll keep you up to date with the 1895 as well the lady scores from Oldham and Keefley as Lilly takes the line on Bradford going in on the power play ball's got to ground forward pass from the Bulls that is their second error so we've had two penalties apiece two errors apiece Aaron Moore whistle to lips he will put the or he will instruct Leeds you're playing the ball 10 metres out from your own try line when well Eamon O'Carroll Nine players in, 16 players out for 2024. A new head coach, Eamon O'Carroll, has high hopes that his Bradford Bull side can maintain their ascent in 2024. Eamon O'Carroll, of course, returning to the UK after two successful seasons under Steve McNamara's staff, which saw them reach two out of the last three grand finals. Certainly what you pick up with Eamon O'Carroll is that connection with the fans, and he does that with the team as well, with a high degree a level of honesty. So Leeds 30 out from their own try line, just moving the ball down the middle channel here now with James Donaldson. Donaldson on his old stomping ground here at Odsall. He'll get to his feet, he'll play the ball. Ball goes right now towards Johnson. Johnson kicks through on the last, but Tafu has done well. He's coming across from his wing position. Corey Johnson's trying to steal the ball one on one. Referee Aaron Moore says tackle completed. Could have been a six again or a penalty there. But as it is, McGowan's in on tackle two. So Bradford, five shy of halfway here. We have had 12 minutes gone on the clock at Odsall. It's still that early Mitch Suter try. The difference between the Bulls and the Rhinos here. And here he is, Mitch Suter now, taking an offload out the tackle from Blackmore. He's 25 metres out. Two tackles left here for the Bulls. As Lawrence now goes down the middle, draws in the defence, finds Lilly. Lilly to Gaskell, Gaskell to Gill, Gill to Tafua, Tafua told to play the ball, 15 metres out, tackle four, one remaining, John Davis is in there at dummy half to Lilly, Lilly across the post, now back to Lawrence, Lawrence fronts up, four Leeds players defending, two scrambled back, two markers, Leeds short on the right hand side, Gaskell, Myers, good tackle on Jaden Myers there, and that's great defence there from Lewis Roberts and Jack Smith, because Myers was looking for the flick on pass to Blackmore and in the end that attack has come to nothing. So it is Bradford 6 leads nil here at Odsall Stadium. Lady scores in the 1895 Cup, Midland Hurricanes and Matt Dunning nil, Doncaster and Richard Horn 10. It's Batley 38, Wakefield 10. It's the Crusaders nil, Swinton 24, and it's currently scoreless between Hunslet, Featherston, Keefley, Dewsbury, and Oldham and Halifax. Leeds have come up with yet another error around the ruck, and Bradford back in possession here, five metres out from the Leeds try line. They're underneath the Leeds post, Mitch Suter's in there at dummy half. Suter gives the ball there towards Hallis. Hallis, Lilly, Gill, Gill, brought down there by Olferts. Two metres out now from that Leeds Rhinos try line. Davis. 
scoops up at dummy half, centre field to Lily. Lily now to Hallis. Bradford are underneath the leads post, five metres out, good centre field position, options towards the right, and they go to the right as Gaskell takes the line on, Gaskell's over the line, he's got the ball down as Gaskell, try for Bradford, but Aaron Moore says Gaskell has dropped the ball in the act of scoring, over the line, the try will be ruled out. And Aaron Moore says it's been lost before the try line, so it's going to be a scrum head and feed here to the Leeds Rhinos, 10 metres out from their own try line. Just as we said, it was scoreless at Cougar Park. Dewsbury lead Keefley by six points to nil. And the significance of that game is both Keefley and Dewsbury, they're in group two with the Bradford Bulls. So it'll be interesting to see how that game goes this afternoon, especially with Bradford going to the Tetley Stadium next week and then Cougar Park after Bradford's Challenge Cup tie. So, Leeds from that scrum. Moving the ball down the middle channel here with Lewis Roberts. He had a three appearances for Bradford last year on loan. Ball goes on this right-hand side now with Mikolai Oletsky. Oletsky gets to his feet, he'll play the ball. Donaldson on that left-hand side towards Littlewood. Littlewood's brought down, five shy of halfway. Once again, Leeds coming straight out of dummy half with O'Connor. O'Connor. Looking for options here on the last tackle. Incorrect play, the ball by O'Connor. Aaron Mort says penalty, and it's a chain over in possession. That's the first one that we have had this afternoon here at Otsell. And we mentioned in the preamble, Eamon O'Carroll won't be happy that Bradford are up to eight play the ball infringements. Certainly with three against Featherstone and LFC. And that's certainly an area area that Eamon O'Carroll will be looking to address this afternoon. So far, so good for Bradford. They've caught with two errors, but no play the ball errors. Glenn Blackmore wins a penalty. No, he doesn't. Referee Aaron Moore puts whistle to lips and says he has to go back and play the ball because he just advanced off the play the ball mark under the watchful nose of the two Leeds defenders, Nicholson, Watton and Oledsky. Here goes Aidan McGowan now, takes a short ball from Lilly. Gives the ball to Smith, Smith to Suter. Mitch Suter's looking very lively around the rook. And the 15 metres out now, Bradford. Looking for a second try of the afternoon. McGowan, Hallers, Gaskill. Ball goes back on the inside to Butler. And the five metres out here now, Bradford on the last tackle. 6-0 to the good. Suter into the in-goal area. He's chasing it himself. Riley Lump, safety first. And that one has gone straight into the terracing behind the post. And Bradford, on average so far in pre-season, forcing one goal line drop out a game. So inside 20 minutes here at Odsall, the force there first. And that was clever thinking from Mitch Sute. He backed himself, and if Riley Lum doesn't kick the ball dead, Leeds have gone for a short restart here. Ball's gone 10, and they've come up with it. And that is what happens in the NRL religiously. And Robert Smith, a great advocate of the New South Wales Queensland comps and also the NRL, are expecting a lot of Super League teams and championship teams to be doing that next week. Ball's going to be played backwards here because, once again, Aaron Moore, in the early stages of this game, a little bit keen on who's moving off the mark. No penalty to Leeds when Bradford did it. No penalty to Bradford when Leeds just did it. Oletsky's playing the ball. Down the middle, they're going to come with Nicholson Watton. He scored a try against Wakefield on Boxing Day in that 41-22 wing. They're moving the ball over on the far stand side here now to Lewis Roberts, the Rhinos. Just up to halfway, Rowan Smith's side. They're on the last tackle, so good controlled defence here from Bradford. Good intensity to this one. Jackson Field, high hanging kick, taken by McGowan. 10 out, 15, 20, 25 metres made there by young Aidan McGowan. He's on a season long loan from Huddersfield. Blackmore's in there at dummy half. He's made 10, 15, 20 metres there out of dummy half from Ben Blackmore. Just rolled backwards there. And the 15 Shire halfway, the Bradford Bulls as Blackmore appeals for a six again. Non forthcoming. Here goes Jaden Myers, got a try against Halifax here on Christmas Eve in Bradford's 24. 
16 win against uh, Liam Finn's new side. Here goes Lily, now to Davis. Davis attracting a lot of attention. Got a good work ethic, John Davis. Five inside the lead half of the field. Mitch Shooter now, short ball down the middle here to Lawrence. Lawrence is brought down, 35 out from the Leeds line. Bradford on the last. They go to the sky here with Gaskill. Gaskill kicks towards Blackmore and Myers. Riley Lund calls for it. Sorry, Jack Smith calls for it. And Jack Smith takes for it over on the far stand side. So we've had exactly 20 minutes gone on the clock here at Oxhill Stadium. Bradford Bull 6, Leeds Rhinos nil. Mitch Shooter's try inside five minutes from a Lee Gaskell crossfield kick. That is the difference here. West Yorkshire Radio also going out on Bulls TV. Mick the game caller Gledel. Don't forget the real stuff starts next Sunday. So you can hear full match commentary and build up from that one. We're at the Tetley Stadium next week on air at 2.30. Kick off at 3. Uh, for those that like the preamble and the pre-match warblings and wobblings. Uh, Leeds now 10 shy of halfway playing the ball here with Mikhail Ayalitsky. Ball goes towards Corey Johnson. Johnson gives the ball now to Littlewood. Littlewood's 10 metres inside the Bradford half. They're on the last tackle. Simfield's calling for its centre field position. Back on halfway, Simfield boots the ball. Targets Blackmore. Blackmore does not look comfortable at all. Blackmore's let the ball bounce. Pass on the inside. Lewis Roberts is in at the corner. And Leeds have cancelled out that early Mitch Suter score. We called it in the call. Ben Blackmore was out of position. He was tracking the ball whilst turning towards his own try line. And in the end, Ben Blackmore let the ball bounce hoping that it would go over the touchline. In the end, the ball bounced back to Lewis Roberts and Roberts from 15 metres out. It was a lovely pickup from Roberts and he's gone over in at the corner. A lovely Lee Rhinos try. Him and O'Carroll will perhaps be questioning Bradford's defensive structure there. By all intents and purposes, a kick on the last tackle from Jack Sinfield. That should not be resulting in a Lee Rhinos try. And that is a bit of a horror show from the Bulls on that last tackle option. Jack Sinfield will attempt the conversion attempt from the far stand side. Odsall and this big crowd, over 5,000 inside Odsall this afternoon. It's hushed and it's silenced. And it's good to see the South Bank stand pretty much jam-packed full. All 400 seats um, were taken in the hospitality. So that will earn Nigel Wood, Jason Hurst and the club a fair bit of money this afternoon. So... Jack Sinfield, he was six from seven on Boxing Day against Wakefield. Got a drop goal as well that afternoon. From the touchline, that one is gonna hit the left hand upright and it will bounce away. And the cheers from the large crowd inside Odsall will tell you that one will not count. It remains Bradford Bulls six leads Rhinos four here at Odsall Stadium. 22 minutes gone on the clock, 18 out from half time. It is West Yorkshire Radio, Bulls TV. So Mitch Suter with the try after five minutes and that has been cancelled out by Roberts in the 22nd minute. By the way, a lot of people sending messages on the West Yorkshire Rugby League, West Yorkshire Radio app. We'll go through some of those at half time, but we're back underway here via the boot of Aidan McGowan, who's got the restart underway, and that's going to be dealt with by Mikolaj Oledzki, known as the Polish Terminator, to some of his Leeds teammates. And look at this from the Bulls. John Davis, Evan Skur, who's just come on the field, leading the charge, turning Mikolaj Oledzki back towards his own line and leads on tackle two, the 10 metres out from their own try line here. Olfertz will get to his feet, he'll play the ball, Ball goes down the middle here with Leon Ruin. Leon Ruin's going to be brought down just outside his own 20 metre line. And Leeds now looking very lively here with Jared O'Connor, who's made 20 metre straight out of dummy half. And they're up to halfway here as Corey Johnson's pass has gone very, very flatward looking. But the referee saying it's touched a Bradford hand because he's waved the tackle count down here. So Leeds back to one on the tackle count. Must have been a very fine touch for that one to be called uh, a six again. But Leeds on the attack here, looking to retake, or should I say take the lead for the first time. It's 6-4 in favour of the Bulls. Here goes Johnson to Donaldson. Donaldson allowed to offload the ball. All of a sudden, Bradford under a little bit of pressure here as Hersey Hord, featured here for Halifax in that Christmas Eve fixture, plays the ball 10 metres out. 
Roberts the try scorer for Leeds in at dummy half to Sinfield back to Donaldson Leith, last tackle now for Leeds they're underneath the post 10 out Sinfield boots a ball kicks into the in goal area and it's going to be Jordan Lilly who kicks the ball dead clever kicking from Jack Sinfield that's going to be a goal line dropout Leeds forced the repeat set of six here and we'll keep you up to date with those lady scores it's Keithley six Dewsbury six at Cougar Park, Matt Garside, a former Bradford player, his try cancelled out. So six points apiece there at Boundary Park. Moa Goro has put Oldham in front by six points to nil against Halifax. And such is the nature of the 1895 Cup. If you do suffer a defeat in round one, you're probably out of the, the running for the quarterfinals and that trip to Wembley. That's why it's vitally important for Eamon O'Carroll and the Bulls to go to Dewsbury, what will be a tough game but to pick up a wing. So, Leeds now after that Jackson field drop goal. Give the ball to Corey Johnson. Johnson's caught on the shoulder. Referee says play on. Johnson somehow gets the ball away. Kick comes in here from Ned McCormack. But that's great positioning from Aidan McGowan. And Aidan McGowan has got possession up here for the Bradford Bulls. I think Rowan Smith probably wanted Ned McCormack to probably take the tackle there. They still had a couple of tackles remaining on the set but in the end he's, I'm sure Rowan will say you know if you see something you back yourself Bradford have lost the ball here Ben Blackmore's come up with an error 10 out from his own try line Bradford's third error of the afternoon if you are joining us on the, the app we've got Matt Murdoch Gilbert we've got Bulls on Radio Raging Bull Mr Holbrook joining us Shout out to Dean Lawford, the, the father of Miles Lawford. He's driving somewhere in Somerset. He says he's, he's got the radio on in the car listening to the call here. By all intents and purposes, young Miles Lawford had a, a very good home debut at Bellevue on Friday night before the lights went out. Wakefield scoring a hat-trick with Jeremy, Jermaine McGilvery down the side. Anyway, here we go, back underway here, Bradford, six leads for Alenski. He will take the tackle, eight metres out, centre field position. And it's going to be O'Connor in there at dummy half. O'Connor misses out Donaldson, goes on that left-hand side here, now to Leon Ruin. Ruin, second carry of the game since coming on. We have got 15 minutes to go to half-time here as Donaldson loses the ball. And that's as you were. Well, these pre-season games are all about blowing the cobwebs and they're all about getting minutes in the players' legs, but we've got four rivers apiece here and 14 to go to half-time. It's not been one of the best games of rugby league, you will see. Quite a lot of errors from both sides, not really helping the structure. Don't forget, at half-time, we'll hear from RFL CEO Tony Sutton. I asked him a few probing questions at the RFL season launch, so you can you can listen to Tony for your listening pleasure. Here goes Ben Blackmore, out of dummy half. He's going to be brought down. 15 out from his own try line, tackle number one. Leeds just chancing the arm here with Aaron Moore in terms of the seconds or the milliseconds that they're laying on in the tackle. Suter out of dummy half. Aribi Doro's just come on the field. And Aribi Doro makes an instant impact going straight for Leon Ruin and Jared O'Connor. He's 10 shy of halfway here. Lily looks for a 40-20, kicks towards the corner. 40-20 from Jordan Lilly. Clever play from Jordan Lilly there. He realized that Riley Lum and Jack Smith were out of possession, out of position, and the Bulls do get possession. Still 6-6, Keithley Dewsbury. Oldham 6, Halifax 0. It's working to nil, Barrow 12 at Derwent Park on the Cumbrian Peninsula. People listening in Aberdeenshire, lovely part of the world. Here goes Lily now to Lawrence. Lawrence brought down five metres out. Bradford six leads four, remember. Lily to skirt, Ebert skirt, powerful, bad stormy run to the line. He's a metre shy of the line, says referee. Aaron Moore, Suter to Doro, Doro's underneath the post, big powerful run, big physical hard hitting carry and Doro slams the ball down underneath the black dot, it's Bradford 10, leads 4, Aribi Doro, instant impact off the bench, 
and that will please him and O'Carroll. <laughs> 27 minutes gone on the clock at Odsall. 13 out from half time, and Aribi Doro has just come on the field with Ebert Skur, and it is an immediate, instant impact there from the interchange forward. He got the man of the match in both games against Featherston and Halifax. And he's just come on here and he's just absolutely swatted away four Leeds Rhinos defenders. And I'm sure when Rowan Smith watches that one back, he'll be a little bit disappointed that there's so many blue-shirted Leeds players there in close proximity that Doro has allowed his power to this crash over and ground the ball underneath the black dot. And here's Jordan Lilly piloting the ball over the black dot here. And it's Bradford Bulls 12, Leeds Rhinos 4 at Utsal Stadium. 12 minutes to go and a half time. West Yorkshire Radio Bulls TV. Make the game call a Gledo. Sunday afternoon, Rugby League. Don't you just love this wonderful sport? Wakefield in pre-season action against Batley. The trail, 38 points to 16. So, good performance thus far from Mark Moxon's side. Short restart from Leeds, dealt with by Ben Blackmore over on the far stand side. Quick play the ball there. Sorry, Peggy Barden, it was Chester Butler who dealt with it. This is Ben Blackmore tackled to. And the 20 Shire halfway here, as Bradford told to get up and play the ball. Myers. Runs the ball in. He's brought down five Shire halfway. Suter to Skur. Skur down the middle. Justin Sanger's just come on the field here for Leeds Riders, where he's 17. So Sanger and Ruin, the two Leeds defenders, as John Davis now goes straight down the middle. Bradford just getting a, a head of steam, you suspect, here. We've got 11 minutes to go to half time as Davis plays the ball. It's going to go to Suter, to Lilly. Crossfield kick from Lilly on the angle. Good take there from Olferts. And Daryl Olferts is wrapped up there by some swarming Bradford Bulls defence. Kevin Apple's just come on the field. Gill involved in that tackle. And also Mitch Suter, who is really putting in a shift this afternoon for Eamon O'Carroll's side. A few of the championship coaches who I regularly talk to have commented on uh, just how fit Mitch Shooter appears to be, and I'm sure Eamon O'Carroll will use that to his advantage. Um, and opposition coaches will be, be looking at that and those speedy dart uh, runs out of dummy half and how he can follow up his, his own kick and how he forced that goal line dropout. So, Bradford 12 leads four here at Odsall Stadium. 10 to go to half time as we now see... Riley Lum with possession. Riley Lum wrapped up there by Skur and Suter. Last tackle here for Leeds. 30 out from their own line. 20 Shire halfway. Kick Kings in from Sinfield from deep. It's a wobbler. I don't blame George Tafua and McGowan for letting that one bounce, but Jordan Lilly does exceptionally well there. And Jordan Lilly had come peering back from halfway. He beat both Tafua and McGowan to the ball. And now Leeds are penalised for being offside after that kick chase. And it's a penalty just shy of Bradford's 40 metre mark. Bradford's fourth penalty of the afternoon. And that will see the Bulls fire the ball deep into the Leeds Rhinos half of the field. Keithley have taken the lead at Cougar Park against Dewsbury. It is 10 points to six. That is a big, big score because if the Cougars knock off the Rams, that means it could be all to play for three weeks today at Cougar Park. And let me tell you, they're expecting four or 5,000 for that game. And effectively, it would be a winner-takes-all. Whoever wins that game would go through to the 1895 Cup quarterfinals. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's a Challenge Cup to play before then as Gaskell feeds in Butler Butler towards the line can't ground the ball he's a metre out McGowan goes in there at dummy half takes the ball McGowan short side ball twisted turning Myers Myers is run he's halted there by Lewis Roberts Blackmore in at the dummy half as Myers plays the ball it's going to go from Doro to Apo Apo's brought down Five metres out, he's rolled over. Bradford are on the fifth and last tackle. Suter in at dummy half. Kick from Gaskell, looking for Gill. Olferts has lost the ball. Picked up, try to Bradford. Try's going to be given here. Tries awarded to Aidan McGowan. And Aidan McGowan is capitalised on a horrible mistake from Daryl Olferts. It's another Lee Gaskell crossfield kick. Leeds couldn't deal with it. 
Alfert's lost the ball on his own try line and Aidan McGowan's touchdown. It's an afternoon of first here at Hudson. First tries for Doro Suter and now Aidan McGowan. Bradford Bull 16 leads Rhinos 4 here. Bradford making their way to possession and territory count on the scoreboard. And we've got six minutes remaining in this first half. So, Suter, Doro, McGowan. Referee Aaron Moore had a good look at that one. It did look like it was a fair try on the replay. It all happened in the blink of an eye. But we're in the 34th minute here at Odsall Stadium. And there's a touchline conversion attempt here from Jordan Lilly. Two from two already this afternoon. A chance for Lilly to pilot this one between the balls. Keithley have gone 16 6 up at Cougar Park. Don't want to tempt fate, but it's looking like it could be that game at Cougar Park in three weeks' time as Lilly gets this one from the touchline. Three from three. West Yorkshire Radio, Bulls TV, Bradford Bulls 18. Leeds Rhinos 4 here at Otsal Stadium. Well, the floodlights, the floodlights are just starting to uh, flicker on here. Although Ben Blackmore has come up with an error from the Jack Sinfield restart, he slipped on the touchline and he's flung the ball behind him and it's gone dead in goal for a goal line dropout. So immediately after Bradford had scored the try from McGowan, they've uh, come up with yet another error, the Bradford Bulls. That's their sixth in this first half. It's one of those strange performances where Bradford have done a lot right on the field, but at the same time, there's certainly room for improvement in, certain of, in terms of cutting down on those, those silly errors. So Keithley 16, Dewsbury 6, Halifax have hit back against Oldham, six points to four at Boundary Park. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest scores. It's now Midland Hurricanes 4, Doncaster 32. So it's looking like it's going to be a defeat for Mark Dunning at the Alexander Stadium. Here come Leeds now. They're looking for a try just before half-time. Three minutes to go on the clock here. And they're 10 metres out from the Bradford try line, down by 18 points to four. O'Connor to Sinfield. Sinfield to Leon Ruin. Ruin looks for the support of Sanger. Misses out Sanger. Back to O'Connor. O'Connor to Sinfield. Sinfield now to Nicholson Watton. Nicholson Watton's wrapped up. 10 out, centre field position. Here goes Sinfield. Takes the line on Jack Sinfield. Oh, millimetres from scoring. John Davis, try saving tackle at the last gasp. Crossfield kick from Corey Johnson into the in goal area. Jaden Myers penalised for going high there, Lewis Roberts on Jaden Myers. A fifth penalty in this first half that's gone the way of the Bulls. And that will be a huge pressure reliever for the Bradford side. So two and a half minutes to go here at Utsal Stadium. If you're just joining us, Mitch Souter, Aribi Doro, and Aidan McGowan with the tries for the Bradford Bulls, cancelled out by Lewis Roberts after Jack Sinfield put a kick on the last from the halfway line Blackmore let it bounce and Roberts like the thief in the night scored in at the corner a very conservative set of six here from the Bradford Bulls as we head towards half time Kieran Gill dumped 15 shy of halfway tackle three Suter once again out of dummy half up to halfway and then inside the leads half look at that from Mitch Suter Mitch Suter still going forward and Mitch Suter, well, he's in man of the match contention. He's had a very strong opening 40 minutes. Lilly kicks over the top on the last tackle. It's heading towards touch. And he's just going to let that one skip into touch as young Riley Lum. That will be head and feed to Leeds. And there's a minute left on the clock here. So Leeds will have the final possession at the end of this first half. In the friendlies, it's Hulkingston Rovers 12, Sheffield 12 at half-time. So all points equal there. 
and at the John Smith Stadium, Huddersfield Giants, they are leading the London Broncos by 20 points to 12. Uh, Ellis Wallace, uh, Elliot Wallace, who was a Bradford player not so long ago, he's got a couple of tries in that first half there. But crucially, Oldham have gone back in front and extended their lead at Boundary Park. It's 12 points to four now that the Bulls, or should I say, Oldham lead Halifax. Well, we said there was just seconds left in this first half. Leeds just moved the ball down the middle. A couple of quick play the balls. And it's half time here at Odsall Stadium. Bradford 18, Leeds Rhinos 4. That first half has just absolutely flown by. Well, welcome back to the start of the second half here at Odsall Stadium. We were hearing from RFL CEO Tony Sutton before. We're not quite sure what's happened, but the uh, the equipment's gone down, but we, we're back up and running. It's always a case to, uh, certainly in pre-season, to test the uh, the equipment and make sure we're, we're good to go. So it is West Yorkshire Radio, and it is Leeds in possession. First use of the ball in the second half, and no sooner have Bradford got proceedings back underway somebody's gone high and that will indeed be a penalty to the Leeds Rhinos for that infringement and it's going to be immediately Daryl Elferts to attack the Bradford line just trying to see if Bradford have made too many changes at half time it appears it's as you were but it's a, a good chance here for Rowan Smith's side to post first points of this second half so welcome back everybody who's joining us it is Bradford 18 leads four as we see Riley Lum now go straight into Suter and Butler and Apo as the third man there who retreats and goes back towards the Bradford line leads 10 meters out now from that Bradford Bulls try line as Oledski goes down the middle tackle four gone Aidan McGowan with a telling tackle in defense there here goes O'Connor O'Connor can't get past Mitch Suter Last tackle coming up here. Riley Lums in there at dummy half as O'Connor plays the ball. Simfield stabs one to the corner, targeting Jaden Myers. Myers takes that one under pressure there from both Lewis Roberts and Jack Smith. And also Dylan Proud, who's come on here at the start of this second half for the Leeds Rhinos as Ben Blackmore now goes on a run towards this main stand side and he's brought down 15 metres out. Well, the, the half-time score at Boundary Park reads Oldham 12 Halifax 4 here at Odsall Stadium it's Bradford 18 Leeds 4 so hopefully everybody is back with us at the start of this second half Bradford in possession moving the ball down the middle channel here with Aribi Doro Doro's brought down Two metres shy of halfway on the fifth and last tackle. Referee Aaron Moore, left arm, raised towards the clouds. As Gaskell takes aim, targets Daryl Olferts. Olferts takes that one there from the clouds on that occasion. Floats it back on the inside to Riley Lum. Riley Lum, good defence there. We mentioned Mitch Suter's fitness and Mitch Suter, Aidan McGowan, two of the young guns in this Bradford side. Off that kick chase on the inside, doing really, really well there bringing down Leeds and trapping them after two tackles inside their own 20 metre line. They're finally outside of their own 20 metre line but they've lost the ball. That won't please Rowan Smith because it's a loose carry there from Corey Johnson who decided to take the Leeds line, the Bradford line on. Sorry, I beg your pardon, not Corey Johnson, it's Jack Smith. Got the five and the six uh, mixed up there as the, the floodlights still there. Uh, not quite at full uh, illumination, but it is going to be scrumming and feed to Bradford. I'm just speaking to a couple of people at half time while we were hearing from Tony Sutton. Leeds now up to seven errors in this game. And it's Bradford 18, Leeds 4. Bradford looking for their fourth try of this game. And their. Uh, sorry, they're first in the second half as Tafua plays the ball. Here goes Suter on the left hand side here with Davis. Davis is brought down. Five metres out now from that Leeds try line. Left of the post. Suter 
to Lily. Picked it up off the bootlaces, according to the official. McGowan towards the corner. Myers is in! Jaden Myers! Acrobatic finish! He went past Jack Sinfield. He went past Jack Smith. And he's just come on the field as young Dylan Proud. And he squeezed past him as well. Acrobatic finish there from Jaden Myers. I feel like I've gone back to the 80s and I'm watching one of my mother's Jane Fonda VHSs from back in the day. 22 points to fall. That was simple rugby league from the Bradford Bulls. Mitch Suder out of dummy half. It was ping, it was zing. And then it was the class. McGowan could have gone himself. Real unselfish performance from him. He smuggled the ball to Myers. Myers over in at the corner. We've had four minutes gone of the second half. Bradford further extend their lead here against the Leeds Rhinos. And it's looking like it could be a big win here for the Bulls. Against a very youthful looking Leeds Rhinos side. No secret, Rowan Smith naming a very youthful Leeds Rhinos side this afternoon. Jack Smith, Tom Nicholson, Warren. Both scored tries in that Boxing Day. They feature Jack Sinfield, Corey Johnson, partner each other in the halves. James Donaldson, Mikhail Ilitsky, Lewis Roberts, Jared O'Connor. As Lilly puts his first conversion attempt wide of the afternoon. And um, it remains Bradford Bulls 22. Leeds Rhinos 4. West Yorkshire Radio. Bulls TV. And just for those asking, I certainly wasn't putting the Jane Fonda VHS in to look at Jane Fonda. I thought I'd do a bit of exercises. Bradford back in possession of the restart here. Eben Skirth from his own in goal area. Here he goes. He's not the flying Scotsman, he's the flying propsman. And Eben Skirth's made 20 metres there, carrying Bradford up to their own 20. And then the speed of the play of the ball. It's caught Leeds offside. Oh, this is car crash stuff from the Rhinos here at Odsall. Conceding the errors, conceding the penalties. It's a very youthful looking lead side. But in terms of structure and all about building, Rowan Smith certainly, alongside the assistant at Leeds, they'll be looking to uh, certainly fine tune some of these Leeds Rhinos players' performances. So, we've had eight minutes gone of this second half and Bradford now, with Aidan McGowan, decides to give the ball to Kevin Apo. Apo gives the ball back. Gaskell now to McGowan. McGowan, eight out underneath the Leeds post. Centre field position. West Yorkshire Radio, Bulls TV, Bulls 22, Rhinos 4, Suter's out of dummy half, and Mitch Suter will get a second, a la Heath Lestrange, a la Jimmy Laws, a la Kieran Cunningham. Mitch Suter is making his name and home at Odsall and the Bradford Bulls. It's a double delight for Mitch. Underneath the post, feeble Rhinos defence. 26 points to four. This one is blowing out in spectacular fashion here at Odsall. Well, immediately, immediately, Leeds have called for the inquest because all the players, rather than standing together, I think it was James Donaldson on, is it Daryl Olfert? But Jared O'Connor's still out there on the field. There's still a sprinkling of Leeds Rhinos first team players, but they've they've called and they're all in the the huddle there at the side of the post. You can see it on the, the, the Bulls TV footage for those on the stream. They don't look happy at all, don't the Leeds Rhinos, but I'm sure that's a a team talk of we're not gonna roll up, up and wave the white flag here. Jordan Lilly from in front to further extend Bradford's big lead, which he does. Bradford 28, Leeds Rhinos 4 here at Utsal Stadium. Myers and Suter, back-to-back -back scores for the Bulls. Lilly 4 from 5, 49 minutes gone on the clock at Utsal. Bradford 28, Leeds Rhinos 4.
once again I do apologise for those people that were listening to the interview with, with Tony Sutton um, it is on the West Yorkshire Radio SoundCloud page so if you do want to catch that in full um, it is on there we've got, also got some interviews um, a load of interviews still in the can from the championship launch that was at Wakefield on Friday so we'll certainly get those uploaded as well. Here goes Mitch Suter on the restart to Gaskell, to Lille, to Tafua. Tafua over on that left edge. Just trying to look at the Leeds Rhinos players. Um, so just in St. Gares there, Daryl Olferts. You've still got Jared O'Connor. So there's still a sprinkling, Lewis Roberts. But let's not forget young Jack Singfield, Riley Lump, Jack Smith. Some of the Leeds Rhinos reserve players also out there on the field. So Doro taking the line on, offloads the ball back to Skur. Bradford looking very hungry and energised right at the start of this second half. Suter's in there at dummy half. Ball goes left towards Gaskell. Gaskell stabs it up on the last tackle, looking for Tafua. Tafua comes down with the ball, can't get the ball out the back door. That will be tackle complete. Bradford Bulls back in possession. Sorry, Lee Rhinos back in possession with Bradford leading by 28 points to four. So 10 minutes gone at the start of this second half. And it's Bradford 28, Leeds 4. Raging Bull, and it, Smithy the Bull, Matt Gilbert, Steve Maycock. A lot of people enjoying the call this afternoon. Simfield kicks early in the count, turns around Aidan McGowan. McGowan tracks the ball, 12 out from his own try line. Picks it up, cool, calmly, collectively, and he's brought down... 20 Shire halfway tackle number one. So 50 minutes gone on the clock here. 30 remaining here at Odsall Stadium. Bradford 28 leads four as Kieran Gill's in a sort of semi half back position here for Bradford. He's shifted in from his left wing position. Here goes Suter to Blackmore. Blackmore up and over halfway. Mikhail Oledski in defence there with Jared O'Connor. Here goes Mitch Suter straight out of dummy half. Lovely line ball there from Suter to Doro. Doro's wrapped up just outside the Leeds 20. Once again, apologies if it went silent for a little bit at half time. At least it happened at half time and not during the game. We'll certainly uh, get it all rectified for next week when we're in competitive action uh, when we cover Dewsbury against Bradford. Last tackle play here from Lilly. Kicks through. Kieran Gill. Air sweep from him. Goal line dropout forced because Tafua and Lily and McGowan were breathing down the neck there of Daryl Olferts. And in the end, Daryl Olferts saved Leeds Bacon from conceding a sixth try. As it is, goal line dropout number two forced by the Bulls. And Eamon O'Carroll will be absolutely delighted with this Bradford Bulls performance at this moment in time. We'll keep you up to date with all the latest scores as they come in. Certainly the two games that we're featuring as Leeds go for another short restart and this time it comes off the chest of Arundel behind him to Butler but certainly we'll keep you up to date with the latest scores but certainly we'll be focusing on the game between Keefley and Dewsbury and also Oldham against Halifax. So latest scores in the 1895 Cup, it's Keefley 17, Dewsbury 6, Oldham 18, Halifax 8, Almost suspect a defeat for Halifax will see them out of the 1895 Cup running. So not the start Liam Finn would have wanted at this stage of the season. As Bradford keep the ball alive going, it's Apo out the back door to Davis. Davis still going Davis. Eight metres out now from that goal line dropout. In front of the Leeds post, Suter. Misses out Apo, finds Lily. Lily fires it along the line of Gaskell. Gaskell back to Doro. Doro puts a big door argue on Sanger. Puts it there on Leon Ruin. And Doro, big collision there from Lewis Roberts. Roberts just uh, dislodging the ball. Leeds have come up with the error, but it was the first error from Doro. Uh, and he's like a man possessed there, Aribi Doro. We know he's very physical and a powerful runner. He carries hard, he tackles harder. Uh, Doro <laughs> just lost his bearings there. Um, and instead of running forward towards the Leeds line, he was charging towards the touchline where Lewis Roberts was. But crucially, the Leeds winger had an arm grab and forced the ball, dislodged the ball from Aribi Doro's grasp. So scrum head and feed here 
two Leeds Rhinos, 12 metres out from their own try line. If you're just joining us, we have 26 minutes left here at Odsall. Fast approaching the hour mark, and it's Bradford 28, Leeds 4. Ball goes out of the back here from Corey Johnson. Johnson to Lum. Lum now fronts up, but he can't see any way forward because he's got Davis and Doro, D and D, right in front of him, and the the deal with him with a plum. Here goes Doro and Suter now on Daryl Olferts. Johnson in at dummy half to Oledski. Oledski doesn't want to take the tackle, so he promotes the ball along the line to Sanger. Sanger gets to his feet. Back it's going to go here now with Simfield. Simfield keeps the ball moving. Leads of five metres inside the Bradford half on the fifth and last tackle. Simfield calls for it on short side. Simfield gets it short side. Puts a high hanging kick here. Danger for young Aidan McGowan. Or should I say Billy Jowett, who's just come on. And Billy Jowett does well there. Really dealt with that aerial pressure, that aerial threat, and that will be a big confidence boost for Billy Jowett. No secret, Billy Jowett has seen as a bit of an injury doubt to some, but when he's fit and firing, Billy Jowett's certainly incredibly committed and leaves everything out there on the pitch. And he showed in recent seasons his utility ability. And I think Billy Jowett is one of those players who'll be in the 17 there or thereabouts, week in, week out. No secret, Bradford offered him a new improved deal. And here goes Danakora, who's just come on the field. The former Hulk Easter Rovers man, he had huge impact against Hull FC here. And he's five inside the Leeds half. Bradford are on the last, they're going to kick it here with Gaskill. Downtown that one goes, Riley Lum, Daryl Olferts, they're under pressure. Olferts takes it, but it's clattered there by Gill and Lille. Leeds back in possession, but the 10 metres out from their own try line. Lady scores in the 18.95. It's working to nil, Barrow 22. Keithley 17, Dewsbury 6, Oldham 18, Halifax 8, and it's Hunslet 6, Featherston 34. Two results, full-time North Wales 12, Swinton 40, and it's Midland Hurricanes 4, Doncaster 40. So a defeat for Mark Dunning in game one of the 1895 Cup. Richard Horn certainly confident Doncaster are not going to make up the numbers this season in the Championship. First time in the Championship in five seasons. Leeds now, after being awarded a penalty for Bradford being offside on the kick. They're now 10 inside the Bradford half of the field with a couple of tackles remaining as Corey Johnson goes past one, past two. He's 18 metres out, Corey Johnson, on tackle number four. It's Bradford 28, leads four here. Five tries, plays one as Sinfield takes the line on, but he can't get past two big frame defenders in John Davis and Kevin Apo. Powerful defence once again from the Bulls. O'Connor now. Ball goes through multiple pairs of hands, but in the end... Leeds are on the last and the five metres out now. Corey Johnson pinches one out of dummy half. No, he doesn't. Skirr comes in with Doro. Billy Jowett also involved there. And the door slams shut on the former Bradford Bulls loanee. Well, there's five homegrown players in this Bulls side this afternoon. Jaden Myers, Billy Jowett, Eben Skirr, George Flanagan and Will Oaks. For the Leeds Rhinos, six former Bradford men. Lewis Roberts, Corey Johnson, Mikhail Ayleski, Jared O'Connor, James Donaldson and Leon Ruin. Here goes the jukebox, the former Manly Sea Eagle. 20 shy of halfway for him, Lilly, Jowett, Jowett, still going Billy Jowett, up to halfway, 20 metres met there by Billy Jowett. Good play from the Bulls youngster. Here goes Daniel Smith down the middle. Aribi Doro's just left the field alongside Eben Skirt. That's what the applause was in the background as Dan Smith comes back on the field here. And here goes John Davis to Billy Jowett. Jowett's ball to the jukebox has been touched deliberately and referee Aaron Moore says penalty. So penalty to the Bradford Bulls here. Very rare you see decisions like that given. But it's now seven penalties to three in favour of the Bulls and more pressure here for the Bulls to put on this Rhinos line and this is perfect preparation 
for Raymond O'Carroll's side who are in competitive action next Sunday. This time next week, we'll be at the Tetley Stadium, Dewsbury against Bradford in the 1895 Cup. Here goes Lily now. Gaskell, good pair of hands. Jowie to Blackmore! Try will not count. Try disallowed. Choked off by the officials. Forward pass is the call from Aaron Moore. We'll watch it back on the replay. It was lovely rugby league hands there. Suter, Lily, Gaskell, Gaskell, Jowett. Jowett's ball to Blackmore. Oh, we've just watched it back on the replay. You've certainly seen them at given many a time. Ben Blackmore can feel a little bit harshly done to there. Perhaps if we get the ruler out and measure, we're probably talking millimetres rather than centimetres and metres. Anyway, leads back in possession here. West Yorkshire Radio, Bulls TV. 22 minutes to go to full time here at Odsall Stadium. Halifax have hit back at Boundary Park. It's Oldham 18, Halifax 14. And it's still Keithley Cougars 17, Dewsbury Ram 6. So big afternoon of rugby league in the 1895 Cup. And don't forget, tomorrow evening, it is the draw for the Challenge Cup, rounds three and four. So Bradford know who they will be playing in the third and fourth round should they get past their Challenge Cup opponents next week in a fortnight. There's a lot of cup action to go before we start the season at Wakefield. Leads up to halfway on the last, in field, high-hanging kick. Billy Jowett underneath that one, takes that one coolly, calmly, superbly. And there's a good bit of competition between Jowett and McGowan. Mitch Suter leaves the field. I think he might be getting the man of the match this afternoon. Two tries. Clever kicks out a dummy half. That's what the round of applause is from Mitch Suter. But here goes George Flanagan. And he'll enjoy this one against the Leeds Rhinos. So we've just hit the hour mark here at Odsall. An hour gone. 20 left. <laughs> Bradford firmly in control of this one, leading the Rhinos by 28 points to four. As Lily, Akora. 25 out now, Bradford. Flanagan to Smith. Gaskell along the line. Billy Jowett back on the diagonal. Nine metres out from that Leeds line. They're on the fifth and last tackle here, the Bradford Bulls. Gaskell calls for it. Will it be another crossfield kick? It will. He's looking for Gill. He finds Kieran Gill. Gill can't quite take it in. And Kieran Gill, if he just gets an extra step in front of that ball, he takes that in the bread basket and touches down into the corner. In the end, it was a valiant effort from Kieran Gill. Bradford's top try score over the previous two seasons. And he just couldn't quite take that one in. Bradford 28 leads four. Oldham have just gone back in front, 24-14 at Boundary Park. These are live scores as they're coming in from the 1895 Cup, Workington nil, Barrow 24, and it's still Keithley 17, Dewsbury 6. We spoke to Jake Webster during the week, and Jake Webster was really confident that Keithley would get the job done against the side that has effectively replaced them in the championship this season. Leeds now 20 out from their own trial line. Corey Johnson to Leon Ruin. Leon Ruin's wrapped up there by Daniel Smith. Also involved in that tackle is George Flannin, and it goes for the legs. Puts the gift wrapped and the bow tie on the present, and he's brought down there 20 shy of halfway. As Corey Johnson now gives the ball down the middle, and here's a chance here for the Leeds Rhinos because they're broken clear. Ball goes back to Jack Sinfield. Sinfield towards the corner. Leeds are going to score, no they're not, Kieran Gill, last grass tackle on Ned McCormack, but they've gone nearly 70 metres here Leeds, they're on the last, Sinfield's kick comes in, Apple can't deal with it, repeat set of six coming up for the Leeds Rhinos, what a break that was there from the Leeds, they went straight down the middle channel, I think it was Ollie Smart, who's just come on the field, the former Siddle junior. He's making his Leeds Rhinos debut this afternoon. Well, Ollie Smart's gone straight down the middle there. And he, unfortunately, just didn't have the legs. But credit where credit's due. Kieran Gill wrapped up Ned McCormack five metres out. Apple's come up with an error there from the Sinfield kick on the diagonal. Heading towards the post, and now Bradford have a bit of defending to do. The lead by 28 points to four, as Lewis Roberts 
gives the ball out here to Smith. This is Jack Smith scored a try against Wakefield on Boxing Day in that 41-22 win. Well, Leeds, are they going to stage a late second half comeback here in Odsall Stadium? Corey Johnson to Leon Ruin. Leon Ruin plays the ball two metres out underneath the post. Johnson, Simfield, Smarts, they're in at the corner with Daryl Olfertz. Daryl Olfertz will skip past Gill to Fuwa and McGowan and he'll touch down in at the corner. Well, is that the moment the Leeds Rhinos start to come back here at Odsall Stadium? It's Bradford Bulls 28, Leeds Rhinos 8 as Olfertz has gone in right at the corner. A difficult touchline conversion attempt for Simfield. Not from one. But with 63 minutes gone here, 17 left at, at Odsall, there's perhaps a glimmer of hope for the Rhinos that they can stage a bit of a late comeback here. Keefley have got a try in the second half to break the stalemate at Cougar Park. It's now Keefley 23, Dewsbury 6. So that is looking like a must-win game for Dewsbury next week when the Bradford Bulls go to the Tetley Stadium. And if Bradford can beat Dewsbury next week, well... Try and get a ticket for Cougar Park because three weeks today, that will probably sell out because whoever wins that game, they will be in the quarterfinals of the 1895 Cup. Simfield from the far stand touchline. Can he get his name on the score sheet this afternoon? No, he can't. Waved away by the officials. It remains Bradford 28, Leeds 8, West Yorkshire Radio. Bulls TV with Mick the Game caller Gledel. And don't forget... During this coming season, we're gonna we're gonna raid the uh, the transfer kitty and see if we can get you some special guests to uh, to join us. But it is Bradford, twenty eight points to eight. With sixteen minutes to go at Odsall Stadium under the floodlights, Ada McGowan. Kicks deep. Dealt with there by Leon Ruin. Tackle number one. Well, Billy Jowett has, has left the field here after a 10 15 minute spell. So we'll ask Eamon O'Carroll about that. But here go leads from the restart. Lewis Roberts is up to halfway. Tackled there by Apple. Lewis Roberts pushes Apple. Referee signal six again. Here goes Smart. Well, he's having a lively debut here. He's Ollie Smart. He's five inside the Bradford half on, on tackle number one. Johnson's in there at dummy half. Justin Sanger goes down the middle. Offloads the ball back to Johnson. Second half comeback could be on here because George Tafua out of position. He went for the wrong man and leads a 15 metres out now. There's still time on the clock. 15 left here at Hudson. Leeds toying with the Bulls. This is where the youthful exuberance will come in and Rowan Smith can use it to his advantage. Johnson at dummy half. To Simfield. To Sanger. Oh, big defence there on Nicholson Watton. But Leeds trying to cross here with Sanger. He's on his back. Oh, he's got the ball back to Simfield. Simfield. They're underneath the post, the Leeds Rhinos, but the try won't count. Aaron Moore will disallow it, saying Justin Sanger had lost the ball. Five metres out from the Bradford line. Leeds appealing, saying it had gone backwards. They were underneath the post, the Rhinos. Just watching it back on the replay. Sanger, Gaskill, McGowan. I think Simfield just had a little bit of a fumble before crossing underneath the post. Try disallowed. Leeds, error number 10 of the game. Bradford on eight errors. Leeds, incidentally, they've been awarded three six agains. But just one play the ball error in this whole game. Bradford have not conceded any. And that will please Eamon O'Carroll. I'm sure when we speak to him in around about half an hour's time at full time, he'll be pleased with that aspect of the game after conceding eight an average of three in the previous three games. So Bradford are going to end the pre-season with a win here against Leeds. 28 points to eight if you're just joining us this afternoon. 
We've also got Mary Ryan or Matthew Ryan joining us, the father of Ethan Ryan, now at Salford. We wish Ethan Ryan the best of luck with his Super League season at Salford. A lot of people tipping Salford and Paul Rowley for a difficult year, but I'm sure Salford and Paul Rowley will answer their critics as Lily kicks early in the count over the top of Olferts. Olferts, horrible bounce of the ball. Kieran Gill, oh, very nearly a carbon copy of Lewis Roberts' try. Kieran Gill just couldn't keep the ball in. Well, who would have thought in 2024 the old speedway slopes towards the corners here at Odsall would be playing a part in the ball having a bit of reverb and a bit of backwards bounce nearly resulting in a try apiece for both sides. Lewis Roberts in the first half, very nearly for Kieran Gill there. Leads back in possession, 10 out from their own half. 12 left on the clock. We're going to open up the man of the match voting for those that have joined us this afternoon. Is it going to be... Well, I tell you what, we're going to throw four names at you, and these are probably four of the strongest performers that we've seen out there this afternoon. We're going to throw in Lee Gaskell for the crossfield kicks and the creativity. We're going to throw in Aribi Doro once again for his impact in defence and attack. We've got to put Mitch Suter in there because he has had an absolute barnstorming uh, performance here at Odsall with the tries and the... In invention and the assists as Leeds come down the middle here, kick comes in, Tafua deals with it. Leeds are just broken down this left hand side here with Lewis Roberts, I beg your pardon, we we'll just stick with the action for a moment. As Tafua plays the ball five metres out from his own try line. It was Lewis Roberts linking with Jack Smith there, so Jack Smith kicked on the diagonal. Well every member of Eamon O'Carroll's bench is now out there on the field because Dana Coros there, Elliot Piposhit, Will Oakes has just come on, George Flanagan, so... Eamon O'Carroll clearly pleased with what he's seen from the majority of his first team as George Tafua leaves the field here for Will Oakes. But yeah, those are the options for the uh, Bradford Bulls Man of the Match this afternoon. Let us know in the comments and uh, Mr Kieran Dolby will be keeping an eye on, on those and I think if I'm going to be a guessing man, Mitch Suter's probably going to get the uh, get the, the, the man of the match this afternoon and, and probably actually for those in the ground, the sponsor's man of the match. But we will wait and see. Leeds back in possession here with Leon Ruin. 10 inside the Bradford half of the field. Bradford 28, Leeds 8. As Leeds front up down the middle here with Freddie Brennan-Jones. Brennan-Jones is wrapped up. Don't forget Leeds next week. They play against... Hulkies and Rovers in James Donaldson's testimonial at Headingley. Bradford are on the road to Dewsbury in their f first competitive outing of the afternoon as Leeds now play the ball as Sinfield kicks to nobody and that one is a poor kick option there from young Jack Sinfield. That one's just gone dead over the Dale ball, dead ball line. Remains Bradford 28, Leeds 8, Lady Scores working to nil, Barrow 28, Keefley 23, Dewsbury 6. Oldham, a big shock and a big win on the cards at Boundary Park. It's Oldham 24, Halifax 14, and it still remains Hunslick 6, Featherstone 34. So James Ford and the Rovers are going to be off to a winning start in their 1895 Cup game. Don't forget the Challenge Cup draw tomorrow evening on the BBC Red Button. I think it's at half past six. I'll put a tweet out later on this evening confirming the details. I'm sure it's half past six tomorrow on the Red Button. And obviously Bradford will know their third and fourth round Challenge Cup opponents. Here goes Daniel Smith playing the ball. 30 out from the Leeds line now as Jordan Lilly gives the ball along the line to Akara. Akara's brought down there by Leon Ruin and Justin Sanger. Ball goes back down the middle channel from Flanagan now to Hallas. Hallas to Lilly. Lilly looks for support, wrapped up, caught in a bit of tailspin there, Jordan Lilly. They're on the last tackle here, the Bradford Bulls, 10 metres out. Left-hand side of the post, Gaskell dabs one up for Kieran Gill. Ball's back, no one can get there. McGowan does, McGowan's over the line. Referee Aaron Moore says, knock on. It's been touched by a Bradford hand first. Third Bradford try disallowed in this second half. 28-8, it remains largely competitive. But I think Bradford did really, really well in that second half at the start. Those back-to-back -back tries and controlling that opening 10 minutes, absolutely crucial from their point of view. Figman Blackmore can be a little bit disappointed that his try and the assist from Billy Jowett 
was chalked off by the officials, but by and large, a real strong performance here for him and O'Carroll and the Bradford Bulls to work with. Ollie Smart wrapped up there by Piposhe, who signed a one-year deal with the Bradford Bulls during the week to obviously offset the Brad England departure. That's not just going to be the, the new arrival, by the way. The cavalry, as, as CEO Jason Hur says, will be coming. Eamon O'Carroll, plenty of irons in the fire as Ollie Smart's ball has been lost there by Riley Lum. And he's been caught high there as Lee Gaskell. But Bradford are just going to opt for the ball on the halfway line. Referee Aaron Moore saying double knock on there on that occasion. Gaskell this saying he was caught high. That one's just been rubbed away, waved away. So Bradford 28 leads eight. Final seven minutes here at Odsall Stadium. A lot of people heading towards the, the exits here. Very cold evening setting in at Odsall Stadium. Bradford, five inside the Leeds half as Flanagan now. Down to Smith. Smith rolled over. He's brought down 25 out, centre field. Flanagan to Hallas. Hallas to Akora. Cora makes three Leeds defenders work hard to bring him down. He's 15 metres out from the Leeds line. Man of the match is Mitch Souter. So Mitch Souter, he's been given the man of the match by the sponsors here this afternoon. And there's just a delay in game here because Danakora has gone down holding the head. Lady scores, Keith Lacougas 23, Dewsbury 6, and it's Oldham 24, Halifax 14. And I'm kind of guessing, if you go on Bradford Bulls Facebook Live, where you've got Lee Gaskell, Mitch Suter, Aribi Doro, you can vote for your man of the match on there. But certainly, hopefully Danakora gets to his feet and he's OK. Three, Aaron Moore just making sure everything is okay here. Play continues. Joe Arundel now goes on a run towards the Leeds line. He's held up. We go back to the 10. So that happened quite in the blink of an eye there, to be fair. Cora just been given the thumbs up by the Bradford Bulls physio. Gets to his feet. Quick play the ball. And Bradford nearly in at the corner with Joe Arundel. I think it's going to be a double man of the match award for for Mitch Souter as John Davis now finds the ball back to Dan Smith. Daniel Smith now fronts up for Leeds defenders involved in that defensive play there on Daniel Smith. Last tackle and Smith's going to play the ball 10 metres out centre field. Flanagan, De Bradford have a score in him. It goes towards Peposhe. He's over the line. Elliot Peposhe. He signed a one-year deal with the club following a successful trial period. And what a week for Elliot Peposhe, the former St. Helens junior. He breaches Leeds line. Bradford's sixth try of the evening. And under the floodlights here at Odsall, Elliot Peposhe goes past Riley Lum, Jack Sinfield, Ollie Smart and Harrison Gilmore. Four Leeds defenders could not stop the charge of Elliot Peposhe. And I tell you what, Elliot Paposhe, he could be just as big and impactful as Eben Skirt, Aribi Doro, Danakora. Bradford have a real talent on their hands. And with just minutes left on the clock here at Odsall, that will just push Bradford out just that little bit further. Three tries in each half. Suter, Doro, McGowan in the first. Myers, Suter and Paposhe in the second. It has been a very, very successful pre-season period for the Bradford Bulls. Jordan Lilly, five metres in from this main stand touchline. Can he add a crucial two points here for the Bulls? Turning 32 into 34, which he does. Bradford Bulls 34, Leeds Rhinos 8 at Utsal Stadium. Four minutes left on the clock. Four minutes... 
for Leeds to endure just a little bit more pain. Suter, Doro, McGowan, Myers, Suter, Piposhe. Jordan Lillick, five from six. And they've gone for the short restart, the Leeds Rhinos, and it has not gone the 10. Penalty number eight of the afternoon stroke evening. Featherstone have just hit 40 points against Hunslet, still playing there, and it's still Oldham 24, Halifax 14. It's Keefley 23, Dewsbury 6. Well, there's still time on the clock here for Bradford to cross for a seventh try and probably get... 40 points should the conversion go between the posts. Here goes Mitch Suter back on the field. Gaskell to Peposhi. Peposhi going towards the line. Once again, four Leeds Rhinos defenders around Elliot Peposhi. He's pushed back in the field of play. Quick play of the ball. Flanagan, Gaskell. Gaskell back to Smith. Smith puts the fending, offloads the ball back to Akora. Akora's eight metres out underneath the Rhinos post. So, two tackles left here for Bradford on the restart. 34 points to wait as Dan Smith crashes over. But he can't get the ball down. He's placed it on the knee of Riley Lum. And we go back to the 10 in the former Castleford Huddersfield. Featherston man. Oh, two tries against Hull FC. And he enjoyed that one against the Rhinos. Tackle four coming up. Suter. Ball goes left to Gill. Well, he might not have scored Kieran Gill. I'm sure he's saving himself for when the competitive stuff starts and the, the tries actually count. But he's playing the ball on the fifth end last as Flanagan tries to pinch one. Flanagan's claiming a try, but he's held up. Oh, it was on the last tackle play there. I think the crowd are counting us down here. The hooter does sound full time here at Utsal Stadium. That is all she wrote. Bradford Bulls. A resounding victory by 34 points to eight. Three tries in each half laying the platform here. Yes, it wasn't perfect. There were still 